In a previous video, I show you how I make these collapsible silicone containers after much trial and error. And in this video, I want to show you a continuation of that process and how to make a silicone container that collapses much better and is much more reliable. My name is Eric Stribble. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They now offer rapid prototyping, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and 3D printing services. For 3D printing, they offer FDM, SLS, SLA, and SLM. The prices are incredibly reasonable and the quality is top notch. You can upload your files right on their website and receive a quote shortly thereafter. Big or small projects, PCBWay can help. In the previous video, Sebastian Swinkles had asked if we could print the molds in the closed position. I hadn't heard of that for producing this, but I thought we'd give it a try after he indicated and showed me some images of silicone molds molded in the collapsed position. So we're going to try that for this video. Of course, I built a collapsed mold in Fusion, and you saw me printing it out on my Ultimakers, and that's what we're going to try to drop in some silicone and make a collapsible container in the folded collapsed position. In the previous video, you saw me struggling to get the molds apart. This time, I've added some generous tabs and a groove all the way around so I can take the molds apart. I'm waxing them up to help me take them apart, not to prevent the silicone from sticking to the inside of the mold. I'm using Silicone Inks XP 592. This is a Shore Hardness 58A durometer silicone much harder than I would normally use for making silicone molds. But for this application, a stiffer silicone is required. The mix ratio is 10 to one for this silicone and I mix it up really good. And then I mix it up some more into the vacuum tank. It goes as you really introduce a lot of air bubbles when you mix your silicone together. Degassing is absolutely essential. Once I feel that I've drawn most, if not all the air out after about 10 minutes, I'm able to pour it into the first half of my mold. There's a little groove that runs around the top of the mold. And so I make sure that I get it in there really well. And I pop all the bubbles and I set this mold on top of my dental vibration table to really raise all the bubbles all to the top. I squeeze the mold half together and I hold it together with a series of clamps to make sure that I've got the correct wall thickness of the part. Once it's cured, I take it out and I investigate what we have. This one I set for overnight, so it's fully cured. I was really hoping that molding it in the down position, I was just going to be able to pop it open and it was going to work. All right, let's try this again. We'll mix up about 75 milliliters of silicone, add my hardener, mix well. Degas, then pour into my molds. Now, I do add an additional spray mold release just to help me take the molds apart, not to keep the silicone from sticking. I just want to make it easy to take apart and not destroy my molds. So I add the additional spray release agent. It's a wax release agent. On the vibration table it goes and we put the two halves together. Now we're going to demold this in a green state so that we can use the lessons we learned from the last mold making session to get a container that will work in both the collapsed and expanded state. I let this stay in the mold for probably about five and a half hours so it's it's not fully cured uh, but it's not really sticky green and we'll take it apart we'll see what we get trim off the little vent tabs and very carefully try to pry it out of the mold without tearing it and 
get a piece that ends up in one piece. Now, I stick the part into an old mold from the previous video. This is gonna allow me to press the silicone down and have sort of a backing so that I can pour some sand into the mold and get the silicone to cure in the upright position. I let the air out, put some weight on the top, and then in the next morning, I dump the sand out and let's see what we get. All right, I clean out the sand with a little bit of water and let's take the part out of the form and see what we get. Uh, looking pretty good. And our goal here is to have one that collapses really nice. Yeah, so this is really nice. I'm very pleased with this part. I wanna show you the backpack hangers. If you're a longtime subscriber, you probably know all about the Alfred backpack hangers. They come in aluminum and stainless steel. But if you're new to the channel, these may be new products for you. They're serialized, laser etched, and they are 100% recyclable. There's no plastic involved in the making of these products and will last you a lifetime. If you get a backpack hanger, it comes in a nice, simple brown cardboard box and a canvas bag that holds the backpack hanger that you can reuse for some of your gear, a couple of stainless steel screws to mount it to the wall with, and you get a design and making sticker. If you purchase one of these backpack hangers that I've designed, from the link in the description below on the Botson website, you'll be supporting the channel and you'll be supporting me and creating great content in the future. So one of the things that I like about prototyping is that you can make more than one. So in this case, I wanna have an alternate or a backup silicone collapsible container. And I'm gonna use a slightly altered method for making this one. We're still gonna use silicone, the same silicone we used before and pour it into the mold following the same process. But in this case, I'm gonna end up pulling it out of the mold much, much sooner in its green state. Only after about maybe two or three hours of curing inside the mold. Then we'll remove it and we'll do the same process to see if we get a different result and possibly a better result. We're gonna follow the same steps here, clamp everything together. These clamps are only lightly clamped down. I'm not smashing them together. I want the silicone to come out naturally and take all the air with it. And I don't wanna squeeze or destroy the mold in any sort of way. So the silicone's had about three, three and a half hours to cure. It's still a little sticky and it kind of sticks to itself but it's very malleable and allows you to work the, the part. It's actually quite difficult to get this mold apart because the silicone is still a little bit sticky, but I'm able to get the part apart and start very gently tugging on it. You can see it's almost deforming as I'm pulling it out of the mold. It's very sticky, very, very gummy. We'll put it back into our form and I put a little string in here and this is to help uh, with any trapped air because it'll create a vacuum if I close the seal all the way up. I push the silicone down. I'm going to fill it up with sand so we get nice even pressure on all the walls and now I can finish removing that string so I don't have any trapped air in between the silicone and my form. I tap the sand all the way down and let it cure overnight. Let's take the sand out and see what we get here in the morning. All right, sand back into the yogurt container and then we'll have to wash out the part again with some water and trim off any little bit of flash. It's pretty minimal flash here. All right, you can almost tear that stuff off. It's no big deal to remove it. All right, I have two options here. I like having options. The one in the front is the second one. This one collapses and stays expanded really nice. The one in the back, the third one, was maybe a little too green. It wants to stay in the upright position. When I take this second one and I put it into its frame, it's really nice. It stiffens it up and it acts like 
a regular collapsible silicone container. You put some water or some rice into this container and it's gonna act just like a production collapsible silicone container. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links in the description below and on the channel page. Rock on. Make sure you check out the merch in the shelf below. Also click on the link to go to the Botson website to get your Alfred backpack hanger before they're all gone. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.